ladies and gentlemen, you know, there were many Black people when they left the plantation that tried to get land, and so many had land, and start up their own farms. Much of the land was stolen. And even today, the Black farmer is constantly sabotaged. If you remember the story that came out in 2018 about them being sold bad seeds so they would not have the same kind of crop that white farmers had. And it has been all throughout history of stolen land, stolen livestock, and just taking everything away from these farmers. Now, these folks will make the claim that we don't know how to farm. If we didn't know how to farm, we would never have made it through chattel slavery, and you would certainly not have eaten down in the South. Let's be real here. As long as slavery was going on, you ate. But as soon as those slaves walked away from the plantation, you must be you must have some amnesia about the history. As soon as those slaves left the plantation, it was a famine down in the South. They went through a famine, y'all. Don't ever let them forget that when they want to boast about being the one that knows agriculture. So anyway, let's get into this story, ladies and gentlemen. A new generation of Black farmers is returning to the land. And this came out in Yes Magazine. They're working to repair harm inflicted over the past 400 years with an eye towards reparations. And what happened to Black farmers alone should be enough for reparations. You sabotaged a whole group of people when it came down to farming. Imagine your neighbor stole your cow. A few weeks later, the neighbor comes over laden with remorse to offer a sincere apology and to promise to make it right. No, give me my cow back. Okay. The neighbor offers to atone by giving you half a pound of butter every week for the rest of the cow's life. What do you think of that? No, give me my cow back. Why would I want you to give me butter from my cow? Give the cow back. That's not equivalent to stealing a cow, okay? If, if you took the butter, they're coming out easy. They still got your cow. They are still getting everything out of the cow, milk, butter, and even once it's slaughtered, uh, the meat and everything. So no, why would you want the butter? You wouldn't want your cow back. It's crazy. And the United Nations agree. The UN principles on uh, reparations and immunity, which provides basic guiding principles around gross human violations, hold that reparations should be proportional to the gravity of the violations and the harm suffered. In other words, society scant attempts to make amends for atrocities is the butter. Reparations is the cow, exactly. Compensation for unpaid wages under slavery alone would add up to $5.9 trillion in today. Yeah, well, I think it would be higher, but $5.9 trillion is what they came up with. That doesn't include damages due to Black people because of such policies as Jim Crow, redlining, mass incarceration, which is still going on today, or other injuries. Discussions around reparations in this country have been of special interest to, you know, to Black farmers. And I don't blame them. I understand because they want to be compensated for all of the abuse they had to take. And them being cheated every step of the way and losing their land. Okay, uh, the litany of so societal abuses heaped upon them, including the broken promises of 40 acres and a mule, lynchings that targeted landowners, and uh, you know, most of the black men that were lynched were business owners and a lot of them were lynched so that these white folks could get their land. 
Some of them had many acres of land and they didn't want them to have it. So they would make up some lie in order to get that uh, black man lynched, run his family off the land and then take it. And if he had any kind of bank account, they stole the bank account too. Discrimination by the federal government and heirs, property, exploitation. As a result, the number of black farmers has declined from 14% of the nation's farmers in 1910 to less than 2% today with a corresponding loss of more than 12 million acres of land. Melissa Gordon's thesis report of uh, Tufts University shows wealth decline, the black community through farmland loss exceeds $120 billion. Wow. I bet it's even higher than that, y'all, because you know any numbers they give you is always going to be low ball. 1997, Black farmers drove their tractors to Washington demanding justice and sued the federal government for its leading role in their oppression. The Pickford versus Glickman settlement of 1999 widely lauded as the largest civil rights discrimination payout in the country's history awarded about $2 billion with a typical disbursement of $50,000 to an individual farmer. What? Oh, these people. It should have been way higher than $50,000, y'all. That, that is a joke. While significant, it still fell short of reparations. It damn sure did. That, that ain't nothing. The amount did not come close to the calculations of what is owed and was not enough to buy back the lost acres of payoff that crushing debt farmers had accumulated in their bids for survival. While Sinek predict the extinction of the black farmer, the farmers themselves are not giving up. No, they, they want it to drive them to extinction. That's what they want it. So that it would be nothing but a sea of white farmers out here. That's what this country really wanted. But they never really truly accomplished that because there are still some black farmers around. Not on our watch, said uh, Raphael Aponte, livestock farmer in Western New York, when asked whether black farmers are dying out. A new wave part of the returning generation of black farmers who grandparents and great grandparents fled the racial violence of the South are now finding their way back to the land. They are building on the legacy of organizing and resistance in their lineage and working to create an infrastructure for reparations. Three nascent farm led organization formed within the last two years, are working to repair the harm to black farmers over the past 400 years. We are making the road as we walk, Aponte asserts. Black Farmer Fund in Wake County, North Carolina, Olive Watkins operates a forest farm on land that has been in her family since 1890s, wow. It took a while for her grandmother to get on board with the idea of growing mushrooms and bees under the forest canopy. But now that she sees, you know, so I guess now that she sees everything is happening, she is all for it. The ancestors are so proud of you, Olive, carrying on our legacy. Wow. Wow. Watkins is a full-time MBA candidate and a director of the founding board of the Black Farmers Fund formed last year to seek, to seek reparations for Black farmers. It's a charitable fund that pulls money from investors to provide non-extractive loans to Black-owned farming and food businesses. The Black Farmer Fund is a tool to make reparations happen, a vehicle to 
aggregate money so that it gets invested in our farmers and build community wealth, Watkins said. I realized that we need to develop financial literacy and finance vehicles in our movement in order to gain access to the capital we need to thrive on the land. Yeah, and you need to set up funding to make sure you don't get sabotaged again. Because, you know, as soon as you get a good thing going, these folks are coming to sabotage you. They, they've been doing this all throughout history. So, you know, Black farmers do not get loans in this country at the same rate as white farmers. Never did. They never did. So, I'm glad to see that they are trying to set up a whole separate type of funding for Black farmers. I think that is the key to them really being able to get out there and have productive farms. For example, the USDA has a practice of requiring farmers to pledge their land as collateral for loans, which has led to land seizures that disposes Black farmers the funds does not place liens on land. So the farm, the funds that they are setting up for the black farmers will not put a lien on their land. I think that's a good idea. We as farmers are still working at the scene of the crime. Watkins said something I can offer to this space is a vehicle to help us access the large sums that we are owed. So, ladies and gentlemen, I think this is an excellent idea. And, and that is really the key. You got to cut them out of everything in order for, you know, your farms to be successful. Now, here's the part I wanted to jump down to. White people now control 98% of the nation's farmland. And you see farming has fallen apart for many of them in this country. See, you built your foundation on stolen land. And those curses are on you for that. You stole the land and then you start farming on stolen land. And now you want to know why your farms are underwater. And you can't grow nothing on the land and your livestock, you can't even feed your livestock. Curses. The land trust received donations of deeds and easements and then distribute those rights through leases or title transfer. The trust recognizes that the genocidal theft of land from the indigenous people was the original harm perpetuated by this nation and has uh, consultation protocols with native communities uh, regarding all lands, its stewards. Its goal is to double the amount of land held by Northeastern, Indigenous, and Black people over the next decade. Good. I think that's an excellent plan. Not only give them land, but give them more than what they're asking for. Whatever they ask for, give them double. Excellent idea. Okay, lauded by her peers as the Ella Baker of the Black Food Movement, Dara Cooper is a behind the scenes organiz organizer who helped bring together hundreds of farmers across the country to form the Black Land and Power Fund two years ago. A lot of us are conditioned to play small and not realize our full power, says Cooper of the National Black Food and Justice Alliance, I'm sorry, Alliance, we have to intervene and confront the state and make sure our communities are ready and able to be self-determining. We need to build our own infrastructure. People are excited and ready. Yeah, they are. Okay, I guess this is her. You know, I mean, these things are good to know. I didn't even know this was going on in the country. 
Cooper notes that if the organization were fully funded, that would not be enough for reparations. Reparations have five components under international law, cessation of harm and guarantee of non-repeat, restitution, comp compensation, satisfaction, and rehabilitation. Yet the harm against black people continues and a great deal would be needed to rehabilitate the cultural and emotional damages incurred through hundreds of years of slavery, Jim Crow and land expulsion, she says. The reparations now toolkit from the movement for black lives offer a detailed roadmap for society to return the whole cow to affected communities. The Requiem for Black Farmers is a dangerous narrative, Cooper said. We are not dying out. We will invest in the continuation of Black people's ability to feed ourselves and to have dignity in stewarding the land. So I think this is wonderful. And I, like I said, I'm glad they're setting up their own separate funding for these black farmers and not going to the government that has sabotaged black farmers all throughout the centuries. We, in order for us to succeed, we are gonna have to be independent from this government as much as possible. And like I said, this will give us the ability to eat healthier like many of us are now and continue that especially if a lot of black farmers crop up and we can buy from black farmers. I sure welcome that. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell and I'll see you on the next video. Peace family.